Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 25 of Wired Unplugged. It's me, Jake Kulkowski. I'm back, 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 back again. And also back, 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 back again. It's Gary Marshall. Good morning. Hello. And actually morning this time. It is actually, actually, we're actually recording morning. this in the morning. We're, we're recording, recording this in the morning. You can tell from the bags under yeah, my eyes. We just, yeah, we just, yeah. Barely the, caffeinated. The, the, the caffeine, caffeine yeah. IV that is just basically being dripped into me right now. How are you doing, Jake? Um, I'm doing great, thanks. Uh, I uh, just caught up on the latest news. Uh, we've just mm-hmm. we've just added some news pieces for the news we stole off the internet like about five seconds ago. So like we've we, we got super date. fresh, up to date news. And uh, look, I'm not saying that the podcast last week was uh, a bit of a catastrophe because <laughs> me and Gary oh, weren't yeah. in it. But what I'm saying is, if this one goes smoother. Let's yep. just put two and two together. Can, can we? Can we just uh, let's address the, the the elephant in the room? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You have hit record, right? Yep, I've hit record. Yep, yep. So, so, <laughs> for those that were <laughs> right, yeah. okay. aware, yeah. Did um, you hear that a flash of fear in my face though when you said that? No, I was like, uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. You're looking for that red light to you know mm-hmm. on air. Yeah. Um, Myself and Jake obviously weren't weren't on the podcast last week because you know Jake's a, a busy guy, uh, you, yeah. you know, jet setting kind of lifestyle. Yeah. You can tell he's kind of you know he's got that about him. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> and and I only get brought in when there's something super hot to talk about. And yeah, exactly. we were both away, but we're doing our things, and we, we, the podcast was left in the hands of the usually yeah. safe and reliable hands of Aaron and Steve. They're gonna and hate this, aren't they? No, they are. They are. And I'm drawing it out. I'm leaving a lot of pregnant yeah. pauses here. We're talking like triplets. Um, they're in that, you know, in the, the movie Matilda, they're in the chokey. That's why they're oh, not they, here. That's why they're not here. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, they, they, they did their recording. They did their show. Or so they thought. And yeah, once know. they'd finished and they'd wrapped up and, and you know, the, the Unplugged podcast, it goes out pretty close to the knuckle because it has to, right? Like, like a lot of, don't get me wrong, there's a healthy amount of propaganda in this thing um, mm-hmm. there's a healthy amount of just kind of banter but you know yeah. what one of the main things about podcasts is you know you want to be up to date you want to be relevant right. so these usually get recorded a day or two before they go out if not closer mm-hmm. sometimes and by the time they realized this and they, they'd finished it was the end of the day that they hadn't hit record steve had forgotten to hit record and they had no podcast wow. anymore they had nothing they, they had the little segment that they had pre-recorded in advance that wasn't time sensitive but that's why Unplugged was a little bit lean last week. And that's why we had to fire Steve out of a cannon into the sun. Yeah, and he's walking home. It's like, the, <laughs> it's like the longest walk of shame ever. <laughs> he, he does live like five, six hours away from the office as well. He's probably <laughs> just about home now. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, honestly, like uh, it was still a decent like, podcast. No, it was. And, and, and you know what? I think it was done all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For, for the for the lean trimmed, we'll, we'll, we'll see that they were cutting. We'll see that they were cutting for the for, for their their hot podcast summer. Yeah, um, you know it was. <laughs> and it now was we're back to bulk. Chock full. Yeah, they were bulking. They were right. bulking. So this is like a decent segue: bulking, wrestling, yep. um, muscular yep. men. This week's guest is Simon Hill, uh, who is like pop culture um, like condensed into a person, really. He's a presenter, he's a DJ, uh, he's a wrestling aficionado, of course, he's a gamer, um, esports host. So it's quite interesting because we've had a lot of content creators on and presenters are like a little bit more, they're like a, a content creator funneled through media school and journalism, yeah, right? They've so had like, media training. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and so a so little bit later on, you'll hear from Simon about all manner of things we go in depth about uh, his time at Kerrang!, uh, the many, many uh, facets of Simon Hill. God, basically. That, that's a name I've not heard for a long time. Like, like I don't know but whether it's just a sign of the digital age, mm. as it were. Yeah. But like, like I don't know about you, Jay, but but my college experience was basically like when you weren't in college, you were around at somebody's yeah. house listening to or watching Kerrang or Scuzz on on their show. Like, like, like that was it. That that was yeah. literally it. That yeah, was shouts out. That, that was all you yeah. did. Well, and it was also um, the uh, like the the short lived P Rock TV, which is like oh, punk stuff God, and, and yeah. Scar. There was loads of rancid and stuff. So yeah, I was talking to Simon about that. Um, oh, and, I'm looking forward to that. And a bunch that's, more. It's gonna be great. Exactly. It's gonna be great. But, uh, like all great um, ministerial broadcasts, we better start with a chuckload of propaganda. So I'm gonna oh, run the rhythm. Well, uh, do it. Okay. <laughs> Hit me, Wired propaganda. And if you don't know what Scuzz was, 
essentially that jingle just yeah. drawn out. Forever. Just drawn out for like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's still going. It's still going. Do, do Probably know. not, but it was pretty but, lit, wasn't it? Uh, I'm yeah, going to Google it. Uh, yeah, Google it. Was past tense. No, it's not. Um, oh. I'll tell you what is around, though. Lots of propaganda. So what, what have we got? Well, first of all, we've got the uh, the propaganda hat that doesn't fit me, so we're, we're going to try and right, squeeze no, that on, and I'm, I'm just going to hold it here, I think. That's and a every good now treat and then for we'll, the, we'll, we'll the just... video viewers, not the audio indeed, listeners. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Or audio listeners, well, Jake's going to have to paint a word picture for you, but he's very good at it. So It's a very... Um, Gary's cranium is now adorned by the hat akin to the home pride man, but fancier. God, every time you say home pride, it just makes me want curry. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> it's, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, Jake. It's too early for curry. Um, well, so, hat in somewhere. hand, we've got... It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Hat in hand, we've got a, a, a bit of a bumper propaganda session um, yeah. lined up. Because well, we're coming up to a game launch week. Um, those of you that have been paying attention to both wired socials and any, any wired mailers and everything... Uh, will have been getting bombarded by a plethora of um, retro goodness in the form of Arcade Paradise launching on August 11th. And not just that, we have a lot of other things surrounding it. So let's go through them in order. Um, first of all, Black Label. Um, that was Steve's strike two, for those of you that listened last week, when he um, he told everyone that they were shipping, they were going out to the world, and it turns out that they weren't. Um, to be fair, in Steve's defense, that one was not on him. Um, that was one of the, the weird, wibbly, wobbly logistics that, that yeah. sometimes things get moved and then and, and kind of shifted around. So he was the deliverer of the news, but it doesn't matter. We still had to kill him for it. Yes. Yeah, so um, so in this case, wasn't... it is shoot the messenger. But it not is normally. Shoot the messenger. Just not this normally. Time. Not yeah. normally. Just this time. <laughs> uh, but uh, we can confirm uh, those of you that have pre ordered Black Label 1, which was Victor Vran, Black Label 2, Town of Light, uh, those are actually shipping from us and our uh, European like center right now, like as I'm talking. Those of you that are pre ordered, they're out in the wild, they are, they're winging their way to your homes so thank you all very much for those of you that got in the doors early because there's not a lot of these left like you know we, we made a, a small batch the whole point of these is that they were like a real premium nice celebration for like uber exactly. fans of the game or for people that just wanted you know i want that game but i want a few extra bonuses with it i say a few there's Kind there's, of loads of stuff, there. there's loads of stuff. There's loads of yeah, stuff in honest, there. Yeah. Um, it's cool. You know, it's, it's for the people that really, really were like enthusiasts for that kind of collectible nature of of well, co you know, collectors or or big fans of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and we announced these things like way back in Y Direct, like like early early 2021, and yeah. between you know the likes of weird Brexit complications and you know about weird pandemics that kind of flared itself up and was doing some stuff um yeah. you know it can be very tricky uh, to get all of the moving parts in place uh, to deliver right, something of like this yeah. uh, and now now it's been delivered so those of you that pre-ordered they are winging their way to you those of you that have not ordered yet um i think we'll probably put a link in the description below both uh, on video or just in the podcast episode if you have a little look in the, the old links you'll find one in there if you like what you see we will be opening up um, deliver uh, orders, I should say, and it won't be pre-orders this time. Like, like, like it will be the remainder of the stock for everyone in the yeah. next wave of that have been manufactured. They're ready. They're made. There's no more waiting a year for this stuff. Like, no, that like as soon as you click that button, one that's already made will be winging its way over to you. So, we will be announcing what is the third entry in Black Label pretty soon. In the pretty propaganda soon. segment. Yeah, the propaganda segment. Pretty soon we'll be announcing it. But yeah. for now, those of you that have pre-ordered, look forward to that. We want to see them. If you if you if you get one, please share it on socials, tag it with black label, you know, at YP on every social, you know, show us them arriving. If you're doing unboxing videos, let us see them. If you if you just want to gush yeah. over how beautiful the build quality is. Let us know, because yeah. I mean that's that's kind of the the thing, right? That that's kind of the, the benefit of doing something like this is you make something, you put it out into the world, and then yes, okay, you make money, and we all become millionaires, and then me and Jake get to do this from a hot tub mm -hmm. in the future. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. we also get to see everyone else enjoy. Yeah, the it's a celebration, isn't it? Really? Yeah, so... it's, it's what it is. So yeah. you know, please do not be shy about sharing your your equal joy. If you're the kind of person that's ordered this, you're the kind of person that's going to geek out and tell the world about it. Yeah. And we're, we're here for it. We're here for it. And the best way to do that, of course, is to either tweet us at YSP P4 um, mm. plethora of hot tubs or uh, or uh, <laughs> You had to say that while I was drinking. Sorry, you? sorry. <laughs> um, or, or... It's a good job everything in here is laminated, man, I tell you. Otherwise, that would have been a problem. <laughs> 
Or you can also email unplug that wiredproductions.com. And, uh, you know, if it's really fire, maybe we'll just like get it edited in to here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll just go, Curtis, easy. Curtis, here, throw this in. Hey, boy. And then, yeah. And then, it, then it'll just replace your head yeah. with a black label or something like I that. I love Curtis, man. That. Shouts out yeah. to him. But yeah. Shout out to Curtis. Shout out to video editors in general, whether you're yeah. like just doing it on a content creator side and, you know, it's like a hobbyist, you're having to figure out how to edit shit along the way unsung or whether you do it for a job. Yeah. Unsung yeah. heroes, legit. Um, um, so we've got a nice, uh, a nice, cool celebration of uh, games of Wired's past. I guess mm-hmm. present too with Wired Bot Label Update. What's next? We look well, into the future. Now we're looking to the future. Well, obviously, Arcade Paradise, Nosebleed, developers of Vostok, one of our earlier um, games that we, you know, published. Uh, we've been banging on about this for well since the the same direct actually as, as the Black Label. It has been a long, long very anxious wait i know a lot of people have been kind of eyeballing our okay, paradise when is it when is it when is it when is it we announced well last two or three episodes ago it's coming august 11th and that will be like six days away by the time this airs that'll be like six days away which is not long Right, so by the all. next podcast, by the next podcast, you will be playing Arcade Paradise, yeah. and I'm not saying you might. I'm saying you will because if you're the kind of person that's watching this, you're the kind of person that's that's ready for Arcade Paradise. Mm. Um, we do have though um, a little bit of an announcement that the world doesn't know about this yet. The world does not know about this yet, but we're actually having a launch event, Jake. A launch yeah, event. I know, and I want to. I'm, go I'm so excited, bad, but I can't I'm go. I'm excited. I'm, I might, just, I might just have someone to like FaceTime me in and just yeah, pop me on. You a, know what? In the t- in the corner. Yeah, can, can, can we? Do, we do have. So, so we are going to be live streaming this. So I should probably put this. Uh, let, let's get through the details first before we get into the. We get distracted <laughs> yeah, yeah. by our, figure out how I can be there. Before we get everything. distracted by our nonsense. Um, <laughs> so for those that, that don't know, a launch event is basically something that doesn't happen or hasn't happened for a while. Uh, yeah. Again, due to pandemic stuff, it's where we kind of. Um, a publisher or a developer will go, hey, we're releasing a game, let's get a load of press, let's get a load of friends, let's get a load of influencers in one location, uh, let's, you know, kind of make a big deal about this and, uh, you know, share it with the world and do cool themed bits on the game and, and allow PR to come in and kind of get behind the scenes with the devs and just celebrating the launch and everyone has a couple of yeah. drinks and has a, a good time. And it's, 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 it's a cool thing. I've never been to one. I, I joined Wired um, literally a month before the, the lockdown. So every game that we've launched in the past two years has just been, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a sad Futurama moment, I guess. I've just been sat yeah. in my, my home with a drink on... Way games out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Way. yeah, yeah. It's not quite the same. It's it, it doesn't quite hit as hard. So I'm very much looking forward to this. But um, we will be live streaming the entire event. And we've got some really cool. I'm not going to go too hard into what's in there, um, because obviously we want to leave a couple of surprises. But there's going to be live music. Some pretty cool musicians are going to be turning up there that may or may not be related to the game. Very a couple cool. of voice actors that may or may not be related to the mm. game. The devs are going to be there. We're going to be there. Press is going to be there. We're going to have cameras dotted around both you know, the musician stage and the actual event itself. There's going to be washing machines that we're going to fill with stuff. There's going to be arcade machines dressed up. Wow. To play there. It's, going to, it's going to be a pretty cool thing. And there's one or two other surprises along the way. Um, we will have um, booths set up at this location in order to you know, have people sit down and stream the game out on channels so you'll be able to see the game being played live the day before it launches. Uh, we're going to have big old webcam- uh, see, webcams, uh, GoPro set up around to catch everything around the event. And we're just going to basically leave it running all day. There'll That's be cool really interviews cool. with the yeah. press, cool interview with the devs, cool interviews with us. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a very, very busy day. It sounds like fun, but there's a lot of moving parts. And, uh, you know, best laid plans of mice and video game developers are are, are, are want to to fall over <laughs> in, in, a, in a live setting. But fingers crossed. Um, if you keep your eyes peeled on Wednesday the tenth to our Twitch, our YouTube, our socials, wherever we end up st- stashing this stuff, you you should be able to come and celebrate uh, the launch party with us from seven p.m. BST on Wednesday. So look forward to that. And then of course, hell, the video game launches right like like yeah. then Arcade okay, Paradise comes out like the next day. Which is going to be a very, uh, I'm going to be on the the the, the soda water, I think. Yeah, quite, quite that's right, the right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, this, this, oh god, going to be our first thing to launch a video game. Okay, yes, yeah, we exactly. We but, yeah, too hard. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's yeah, at least for a lot of people who are going who aren't working, they can just play Arcade Paradise all day with a hangover. Yep. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, Which is that sounds like a great Thursday to me. I'm just putting it out there. If you if you told me right now, how would you like to spend the rest of this day, Gary? I'd say stick. <laughs> give me give me give me a light headache. Give me uh, some. <laughs> give, give me a light headache. Light, not yeah, too much. Not yeah. too little. Uh, just something that I can feel a little bit better from and get that serotonin boost. And then a good amount of water and a cozy bed and maybe a flannel and give me Arcade Paradise and just leave me for like six hours. I can't believe end. Arcade Paradise is out by the time this ne- the next podcast will be the, yeah. the, the, the a post-Arcade Paradise podcast. Yeah, God. That really is something, isn't it? It so, really is. It seems it seems strange, honestly, for for the the, the three four years that Nosebleed have been working on this uh, for, for for the two years odd that, that we've been kind of pushing on this. Um, it seems bizarre, uh, and and it was the same with Martha. I'm going to be honest with you. Like like when Martha released, it was one of those holy heck. This has been like you know five plus years of just yeah. like not being able to talk openly about so much about this game and then all of a sudden having people being able to turn around to you and go here's xxx about the game and you're like oh shit yeah, yeah the game's out now like holy yeah. hell wow this exists so we, we can where well, we can just talk openly about it but um yep yeah. arcade paradise launch event wednesday 7 p.m bst keep an eye out on our socials and streams if you want to get yourself in the retro mood in advance both for that launch party and for the game launched itself on Thursday the 11th. You can go and watch the latest episode of Insert Coin. It dropped yesterday, uh, the making of Arcade Paradise series, where we have basically penned down Nosebleed and said, Oi, tell us about developing the game while they developed the game. And it's been a really cool series. Well, we've done these for a couple now. We did one for Lumo. We did one for Martha. I think the arcade one is my favorite one so far. It's really fun. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting. And, you know, the, this episode is basically focused on you know, as the game was was, was finished, as, as post-production was finished, and they were kind of taking a step back and going, okay, well, all we need to do now is, is mass testing and kind of last-minute bugs, but the game itself is done, and deep breath, how do we feel? What, what was the journey like? What do we think people are going to be excited for? What, 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 are, what are we anxious oh, about? And, and kind of, it's, it's a real nice episode, just watching them all have, you know, Izzy and Dre and everyone else have that big collective yeah. sigh of just, oh, <laughs> like, we, we did it. That's so really nice, yeah. So, so there's go extra watch that. Context. Yeah. So that's if again, if you're listening to this on an audio platform, which quite a lot of you are, to be honest, mm-hmm. um, there's a Wired YouTube channel which is shout out. home to unplug. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Shout out to the shout out to the audio listeners. Yeah, shouts out to you guys. Exactly. It has to be a shout. It can't be a. Piece it can't be a shout. Can't I, I, it, can't, you know? I can't do. They but can't you, know, you know what? I'd, you know what? I'd be intrigued in Jake. Actually, yeah. Just just before we move on, I would like to know where the weirdest place people have listened to the podcast is. Yeah, for sure. The bath. Like, 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 the bath. Really? I don't think that's weird. I don't it's think that's not weird. actually. No, I don't, I don't think that's weird. that weird. Yeah. Well, um, what would be weird? Like a private helicopter. That would be weird. I wonder if there's <laughs> what, 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 like, like Beyonce. Just yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Just sat on the way to launching her latest EP, and then and just on this private helicopter, just yeah. chilling, going. I wonder what, I'd what like to think. I'd like to think that. Week. I'd like to think that. Beyonce but... is our biggest fan. This is true. Um, Gloria Gaynor. Might Gloria Gaynor, actually, that's true. Where, but wherever she listens to it, that's just odd, isn't it? The fact that Gloria Gaynor listens, probably in a massive kitchen, just like. A- what are, I wonder what Gloria's up to. I hope she's having a good day. Yeah, she probably is. She's Gloria Gaynor, right? I, I feel like every day is a good day when you're Gloria Gaynor. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait, words to live by, man. Words to, words live, by. to live by. So, anyway. Yeah, that's, good. That's, that's a propaganda. That that's was, a, that that's, a decent that's amount of propaganda. propaganda. Yeah, and that was again, a good amount. Very, uh, you know, a celebration. I don't know yeah. what the word is. C- celebratory. I don't Celebra- know how to say that It doesn't word. sound weird. It doesn't sound right, does it? it celebratory. Do- it, it, it doesn't... But I feel like you, you emphasize the A. It almost sounds like you're Americanizing it in a weird way. Like, celebratory. Like, celebratory. But celebratory sounds like you're like, like you're celibate, which is that's why that's why I thought yeah, it was weird. Yeah. yeah. So um, celebratory. Black label good. Okay, paradise good. C- uh, celebrations good. Yep. Let's talk about the why the world. News Wake Stone from Google. This is the wider world of video games before we talk about the wider, wider world of Simon Hill. He'll be joining us uh, for a nice interview segment around half an hour in length. Talk about wrestling, music, the best album of all time, how to be a presenter, Rainbow Six Siege, and much, much more. However, first, uh, so Aaron, as you know, Aaron's not here, but he's here in spirit. And by yeah. in spirit, he wrote these for us. So we kind of hijacked it at the end and, and added our own. So it's, it's news you stole from Aaron. 
Well, he, than yeah, Google. news aren't gifted to me, <laughs> <laughs> charitably. So, Possession uh, is nine-tenths of the law, yeah, says exactly. Jake. Won't hold Stolen up goods I accepted in kind, Aaron. <laughs> news from the back of a van. <laughs> Fell off the back of a news <laughs> yeah, van. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is what Aaron's cooked up for us this week. <clears throat> Square Enix have made moves against Patreon to remove a leaked Tomb Raider script. The script is reportedly being used to cast voice actors for the next game in the series. Interestingly, the DMCA came from Square Enix, even though they had agreed to sell the IP and Crystal Dynamics to Embracer. The DMCA is specifically against Colin Moriarty and the Sacred Symbols podcast. They didn't steal the script and are claiming fair use for their mock reading of it on the podcast. Oh, so there we go. Boy, what a mess. What a... So, so, so give the TLDR of that, essentially. Mm. Um... The new Tomb Raider game to try and like lure in voice actors. They yep. had written a little treatment, a little script, and yep. they were giving it away for people to like, you know, send. Um, not giving it away. They were <laughs> very, giving very, to agents. Giving to, to agents the, exactly yep, 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 for yep. people to do like casting calls and the likes. However, <laughs> yeah, somehow it found itself in the hands of Colin Moriarty and the Sacred Symbols podcast, uh, who's like a yeah. A, a, was a journalist at this point, but now he's just yeah. a podcast. Yeah, lo- this is a, a PlayStation, or was it PlayStation themed originally? I, I, I think, think it I was, think that's what the it, sacred yeah, that, symbols that's implies. What the sacred symbols were, yeah. Right? yeah, and now it's yeah. just kind of wider leaks and reviews and whatever. And this and- is, I just want to point out, this is the second week, second show in a row that I've been on with you that we've ended up talking about leaks. Maybe that's what it's, maybe yeah. this is what it is. They're just stagging the them out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in case we get the MCA, that means that <laughs> Steve and Aaron are free to reign. Yeah, it's all part of the wider plan. Oh, so, so, um, now, so speaking of theft, Colin Moriarty and the Sacred Symbols Plus, they they say, um, that it, it, they didn't steal it. They, their exact words were, "We didn't go into Crystal Dynamics and steal it, so it's fair use." But is that a right use of the word fair use? If you've got information that's not even out yet. Is it fair to use that publicly, aka leak it and say this leak is fair use because I didn't, I'm not the source. Yeah, is that I, right? I'm, I'm not entirely sure that it is. I, I'm gonna be it, honest. I mean, no. uh, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer, thankfully, because um, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably end up sending my clients text messages. That is very funny. Like very that. <laughs> that is very good. And I hope but, that if you know, you know. If you know, you funny. know. If you know, you know. But woo. That's oh good. boy, um, but I, I'm not entirely sure what the legality as far as, as that is. But I do know that as soon as you you move into the MCA territory, things get very kind of murky. Um, and in a lot of ways, it can be very easy for people that own licensing and, and properties and IP mm. to kind of enforce um, takedowns or, or so on and so forth. Even even video games. Like, let's be completely honest here. I'm I'm going to be very very real and and it sometimes I've, this has happened a couple of times where um, a popular streamer has decided that they don't like a video game and kind of lambasted it and the, the, the developers or publishers have gone, you know what, we've just decided that you're not allowed to do anything with our game anymore and then pulled their content down. Mm. That can be done, like like at no yeah. point. Like, like yeah. if you look in your T's and C's, if you look at a big EULA bullshit that nobody reads, and you just scroll mm-hmm. to the bottom and click "I agree," um, but at no point is rebroadcasting things no legal or standard. Like, like you're not really meant to. It's just that the majority of the the, the publishing and development world know that it's a good thing, and if it's being done in good faith, then it's nothing but a net benefit for creators and and um, and developers alike. But the, the TMCA's and, lo- and loyalties are a very uh, royalty uh, royalties. Their uh, licensing is a very very weird murky thing. Um, yeah, exactly. So and... basically, it all falls into the favor of the 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 property owner, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but we saw we saw this similarly. We talked about it on a couple of podcasts ago, about ten podcasts ago. That a Silent Hill couple of screenshot had leaked allegedly. Oh yeah, yeah. Leaked. The, the the weird is this a British chav game kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, all, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the, the interesting thing to me, and this is what this is what I I actually don't know about, but but I'm I'm going to make an assumption. Mm. Konami DMCA that successfully. Yeah, they wouldn't have the right to do that if they Unless... didn't own the property, right? Because right. it wasn't a tweet that said this is Silent Hill, so they no. DMCA that saying that's false. This is like no. libel. It wasn't that. It was just a picture saying here's something, and then 
Yeah. They owned that and proved that they own that. So if they didn't to... have the rights to that image, they wouldn't have been able to enforce it. And right. That's, yeah. So thus, with this Tomb Raider leaked script that could or could not be fake, the fact that Square Enix are DMCA in and, and are doing it successfully is almost mm. proof that it is real. Kind I of. mean, it, it is to a point, but it could also, I mean, I, I don't know. Did you look into the, the specifics of the, the script itself? Um, did, did, did you see the, the content that was in there? No. Um, no. So there, there, there is also, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I am with you on this. I, I, mm. you know, there, there is no smoke without fire. There, this stuff happens. Like, honestly, people, it is a wonder that every day on the internet is not filled with stuff leaking mm. out of every internet video game poll. Because the amount of things between scripts to, to character concepts to art to suggestions yeah. to pitches that get banded around all over the world every microsecond between every company involved, yeah. it is a miracle, honestly, that, that this stuff does not happen more often. Um, but uh, from what I saw, and I didn't read full through the full script fully, there is also, as as we just briefly mentioned, with you know um, big streamers kind of deciding to take games and down in a in a negative light, and developers deciding that it's it's far too damaging and they're going to revoke the, the the ability or or, or enforce the MCA to to you know stop that content being on the internet. You know, you do see examples like this where if someone necessarily is not putting something across in an objective manner uh, and, and they're being very, you know using it to paint it in a bad light um there there's almost a a buzz light year um you know gay kiss feel about oh, this yeah. whole thing where in the script basically um it is implied that lara croft has a girlfriend or has some kind of interest along that line which you know certain uh groups in certain podcast circles might you know decide to use in a very mocking damaging way if that were to, to you know yeah to, to, to put there so even if it wasn't true you could you could imagine being squeenix or, or or dynamics or whatever being sat there going oh my god this person with a platform is running out there and saying that true. this you know well liked video game protagonist that this i mean you know let's yeah. let's let's be real here tomb raider for whatever it is now compared to what it was back in the ps1 days it's it's, it's an, it's an OG iconic modern gaming series. Um, yeah, for sure. Iconic and, character. Yeah. And, and running out there, you know, riling up something yeah. along that to, to kind of give a, a, a negative feel to it to certain groups would be something they would want to yeah, avoid and true. might decide to go, you know what, just stop that. Stop what you're saying. It's false anyway, but stop it because people take things and run with it you can say anything on the internet and everyone will believe it jake smells of oranges i don't know if anyone has ever heard this like you, you spend oranges. more than five minutes in but a room with jake and you smell like potpourri for the rest of the week it's, that's really it's, good it's that's very like pharaoh-esque that makes me feel very like a, you know very nice but, but i could say that completely uh, devoid of truth and just if enough people believe it that becomes a thing I now everyone true. walks around jake smelling like potpourri and, and it's awful so i don't know it's interesting um th to me the biggest part of that is that squeenix um made the claim uh even though yeah. they they have sold the ip on uh, as part of that whole yeah. the wider conversation of is squeenix kind of shedding weight in order to make a bigger acquisition look more appealing for themselves um you know the fact that they still despite all of that pulled that um particular dmca claim out that's a more interesting part to me but yeah. i mean hell there's going to be a new tomb raider out there but let's be honest that it's there, you don't, almost definitely there, there's always going to be a tomb raider for the, real the, why wouldn't there be yeah, why would they have sold it if they didn't want to yeah. use it right um so uh or, or, anyway or why would we have they've bought it you know so uh from one um, DMCA takedown to millions of DMCA takedowns every year, let's talk about Nintendo. Oh, good old Nintendo. So, yeah, actually, Nintendo, yeah. Uh, if people don't know what I'm on about, Nintendo actually say, please refrain from mirroring our Nintendo Direct content during a live stream. Live oh. streaming without mirroring a Direct is possible, just not one for one, or will DMCA you into hell? So uh, yeah. this live stream, you could stream, though, and it was Nintendo's Pokemon Direct that happened... At the time of recording, yesterday at 3 p.m. Um, mm. and uh, Right in the middle of the workday, ruining the productivity of quite literally everyone in the exactly. wide office. And yeah. yeah, 
Like, I, Aaron, Aaron couldn't make it today, and I didn't know if these two things were connected. So I watched him <laughs> find out how excited. Was. Maybe he had Aaron's got the Pokemon Direct hangover. Oh, yeah. so, you, know, you know what it is. You know what it is. I'm just gonna. Go. He, he, you know what? You do because he literally the second the direct finished, he said he had a migraine and he, he couldn't record. It's because he saw those stupid motorbike Pokemon, and he immediately <laughs> it, it just immediately upset him to Pulling the point of rage. Uh, yeah. You know well, I don't so, know. I, I liked a lot of what I saw. I'll let, I'll let you do the intro. But I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what, mm. I'll run through it all apart mm, from Scarlet mm. and Violet and then you tell me mm. what you think of it because okay, that's the part okay. that I just was like, that's it's too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 you know, I just found out from Twitter and Aaron. So Pokemon Direct, it happened yesterday. It was about a 20 minute Direct and here are the headlines. They announced more information about Pokemon Worlds 2022, which is like the competitive Pokemon championship in real life. This year it's happening in London. I'll, be, I'll actually be there on the Sunday. I'm going to pop in and, 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 and go and check it out um, because it's like two days before Gamescom. So I'm like, oh, I'll go down. You've you got a couple of days free. Why not? Like, exactly. like before, you, before you go to Germany, let's spend a little bit of time with Pokemon. I, I, I'll, go. I'll go down there. Exactly. Uh, so they announced that. They announced Pokemon Go Fest. It's just more Pokemon Go, some special events. They announced uh, there's a, a Pokemon Unite. They're free to play MOBA on the Nintendo Switch. It's one year old. Uh, the one year anniversary, they're doing a special event where they're turning every single one of the Pokemon uh, into Pikachu for some reason. I guess because Pikachu. That seems like that's it. what you do, I guess, for a year birthday. Happy birthday, your yeah. Pikachu now. Yeah, so Happened if anyone. Me when I was one year old. Yeah, exactly. You evolved, right? So yeah. this is it. So, like, uh, and for those that don't know what I'm on about with Pokemon Unite, it's a League of Legends esque game with multiple roster of characters. In this case, they're all Pokemon. So imagine <laughs> League of Legends if for some reason on one day they turned every single character into Jinx. Uh, I just, I just love the, that we live in a world where we can turn around and say, you know, for God's sake, Charizard, stop running it down mid. But like, like yes! I, love that, I love, I love that we we yeah. have, yeah. we we have this this weird thing. I, I've I've not played much Unite. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah. I didn't have a Switch for for quite a while after it came out. Yeah. And I kind of fell behind on the curve, but it, it it looks like a well-made game. People seem to enjoy it. It's it's still a thing. It's it's um, really good. Like I I played it, and I'm not really that into mobas, but I played it, and I was playing like like Snorlax or whatever, and then I played Gengar when that came out. But it's 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 decent, and like a uh, hmm. couple of friends of mine are absolutely hooked on it. Like six or oh, really? it or something stupid. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the only game. So so they announced that Pokemon Masters was announced, which is just like high level Pokemon for like poker nerds. Sorry. <laughs> Pokemon fans, but like the really high level, no, but like it's the really high level Pokemon players that like who are really into like, yeah, sure, that well, is like, a cute uh, ditto, like but... IV farming and whatnot. And... Yeah, 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 okay, you know exactly what yeah, I mean. Yeah, For those yeah, that don't yeah, know yeah. what I'm on about, I promise you, I'm not being horrible. It's just like, you know, like when you look yeah. at a Pokemon and you go, oh, I really want that Voltorb, and then someone says, ah, ah, ah what's its special defense like? And you just go, what are you on about? Well, those people are going to be very happy with this Pokemon Masters announcement, just trust me. Pokemon Cafe Remix had an update, something to do with Mewtwo, and then Pokemon Scarlet and Violet had a big, fat 12-minute, um, the main event, wasn't it? It was the headline. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was the reveal of a, um, some, you know, some new Pokemon. Um, it was a reveal of, of kind of more about the world and the region uh, that Scarlet and Violet are going to be in. It was a reveal of kind of more of the traversal mechanics and the, 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 the crystallization, I forget its actual term now, um, but basically they're replacement for Mega Revolutions in this one. Um, yeah. so, so all of that was kind of showcased uh, over the event, which was nice. Uh, there, there was some cool stuff in there. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be 100% honest. I, I'm no Aaron. Who could be? Um, you know, I, I kind of, my, my Pokemon playing stopped at about Pokemon Black and White, and I, I picked up um, Arceus last year, and I've been kind of dipping in and out of it uh, and enjoying it. It's a very different pokemon than i'm used to old man yells at cloud get off my lawn yeah. um and, and this seems very much like that kind of dial up to 11 which you know by all accounts but people really enjoyed it so you know godspeed let's see what they do with it but i just can't get over the legendary pokemon man i just can't they, they look I, i'm i don't i don't they make me feel weird i don't like them and can I'd you like describe them to stop. The, the these type what's the closest okay imagine imagine like a giant red frog yeah. That someone like yeah, you know Jeff Goldblum in the fly. Imagine imagine the fly was a frog and Jeff Goldblum was a Harley Davidson. And and you you basically got that's you, not, you that's basically yeah, it's no that's no, not it's bad. terrible. It's all it's, I don't know. You know <laughs> no, what, I mean that description's not bad. Yeah, it's not so. bad. Um 
I, I don't know. I, you know They're what? Like it Transformers seems, a bit, isn't it? Yeah, and and that's I feel like that's what makes it weird to me. Like like every Pokemon thing has you know I feel like very much like Zelda, very much like Mario. Everyone's favorite Pokemon is always going to be the one that they had first, right? Like like that's what it is. So the the one that you remember the most fondly. Um, and maybe people look at some of the, the older ones and go, wow, that was a weird gimmick. I'm glad they don't do that now. But there's just something about these legendary designs that scream like Transformer toy line. It yeah. feels very much like Power Rangers, Dino Warriors and, sh- and stuff like yeah. that, where it's like, this is something weird about it. I can't, I can't quite put my finger on it. Pokemon's always been a little bit gimmicky, a little bit iterative over, you know, oh, this yeah. one's, you know, the, here's the, the general theme of the area and that they're all around that. But they literally just took animals and went they've got wheels for their 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 their, their chest and their butt yeah, ex- yeah. ship it and and, exactly. and it doesn't even seem elegant it's not like oh here's these weird appendages they're literally just fucking wheels they, they literally just stuck wheels on them <laughs> like I, I don't know it's weird i don't like it it feels strange i, I wonder how much like, of it's just down to the fact that like you're going to be able to like traverse the environment with them i, I mean but yeah still, like, that's the, that's the kind yeah. of mix right is that you you kind of wonder how much of this was a design over over to um, you know, reinforce the function of the actual me- mechanics of the game. Like where when they showed more of them, it was like, hey, you, you jump off a cliff and its ears turn into wings, and then you go in the boat and its <laughs> turbines turn into yeah, it... engines, and you go on the land and the wheels spin up, and then it's a motorbike, it's... and it seems very much here's an open world, but we're gonna make it super easy for you to be able to just traverse whatever like they even had like it's running up the side of a mountain skyrim breath of the wild style you know with, with cool okay great um but i don't know i feel like just just give me a bike g- g- give me an actual thing yeah. that is designed to travel there was Don't... bikes in the original pokemon as well right? yeah so yeah like yeah you, you, you got your bike ticket you needed yeah. one like exactly. they, they were super expensive or you or you went and caught in a safari zone um but I don't know. It looks neat. A lot about the world looks cool. It almost seems like they're going for a slice of life um, kind of thing, where you you know you've you've got to go to school for a bit, and and then kind of like this whole portion of the game that's designated for like tests and schools, and then you know classmates. So not I'm, I don't think it'll be quite like as heavy as Persona, Persona or something like right. that by by any means. But you know, it, it seems like they're, they're they're doing some interesting things. They've got um, different stories. Almost, I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit more than the cyberpunk promise. But there's like three different story paths that you can yeah. choose and take in any order. Um, yeah, you know, you got cool, you got different schools. Like it seems interesting. They're doing some things that they haven't done in the series before, uh, while building on that open world. I'm me- glad mechanic. that you're here because my only notes on this were: I liked the vajazzled Pokemon. <laughs> yes, the vajazzled Pokemon <laughs> were the highlight. Actually, no, the the, the highlight was um, was was Fido. Fido was a is uh, yeah. Fido. It's quite um, clever that they managed to get a, a meme every time. So for those that don't know what I'm about, they had like some pig Pokemon like a couple of uh, months ago. Did. People were talking about it. Now there's a dog made out of bread called Fido. It's, a uh, bread it's, not, made, it's not made out of bread. Oh. It's pure bread. Oh, it's pure bread? It's, it's a pure bread dog. Oh my God. <laughs> the hits keep on coming. There's um, so much potential there, isn't there? I, I can't take I can't take credit for that one. I think I read it on on Twitter at some point. Uh, sure. Whoever whoever was responsible for the OG purebred Fido, like like good job that that would yeah, give me a get, good heart. Get, get in touch. Good yeah. job. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, uh, that good. So Pokemon Direct happened. Very good. Yeah. Uh, we Very got... good. Excited. Can't wait to see what more they do with it. The Jazzled Pokemon. The Pokemon are also motorbikes. Um, can't wait to go to Pokemon School and get my Pokemon bike license and the Jazzle my Pokemon. Exactly. That's... Hell yeah! Shout out to Pokemon. Thank you, Nintendo, once again. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll burn through these because there's a lot of numbers attached to them both, and I'm yeah. going to talk about the sexy numbers, killer man. game. Uh, I'm, I'm not good with numbers. Hit me. Okay. Activision. You know them, you might love them, you might feel ambivalent towards them, but they've got an active player base of over 100 million players until now. Activision's <gasps> active player base has fallen below 100 million for the first time since 2019, with Call of Duty in particular declining in player engagement. Um, mm. So, I mean, 100 million people is still a lot of people. I mean, it's still a lot. I mean, you know, if you tried to count 100 million people on one hand, You'd fail because you could only count to you five. Would absolutely, but... fail. Yeah, <laughs> you'd yeah. absolutely fail. Absolutely yeah. fail. But you know that is still most. You know when when we look at and it's all contextual, I guess. You know you, you look at some games, um, but where you know maintaining a game, especially an online one, is hard. Like like you know we 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 do still maintain um a, a couple of OG uh, online games that that have a, a much smaller now um 
player base. And it can be very tricky. You, you, you kind of look at a lot of, of devs and publishers. Sometimes they look at the numbers and they go, oh, wow, there's been like a peak of 20 people this month playing our game and it's hard to find matches and, uh, and blah, blah, blah. They, you know, Activision aren't there yet. Obviously, that yeah. is not that is not what you know. This isn't oh, it's a death knell for Call of Duty or Activision by any means. But contextually, I mean, Call of Duty's been a juggernaut since. I mean, heck, the the first Modern Warfare. I mean, I, mean I, I feel seven. I, I I feel in in the general, you know, more dedicated gaming crowd. You look at the likes of the people that played Big Red One and 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 so on and so forth, yeah. or, or you know. Uh, Call of Duty was always a well liked series, but by the time Modern Warfare hit, I mean it was it was one of the mainstream. You know, it's it's as it was the, the, it was the, the, the meta yeah, changer. Know, yeah, yeah, it's it's the people that only bought FIFA every year also added Call of Duty to their gaming list. You're you know, right. like, like yeah. it, it was it was massive in that way. And for all the, all the potential missteps, you know, I actually really liked events. Warfare, but you know that's just me because it was more like a real tournament. But you know, bring back arena shooters, please. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. you sense. know, for for all, for all the ones like Infinity, what Infinite Warfare and Advanced Warfare, and, and where, where they haven't maybe been received as well, or the player base hasn't responded to them as well, it has never really lost steam. It has never really the, the momentum hasn't gone. And this, you know, we're talking about the the Modern Warfare Two debacles where they were going through dedicated servers not being a thing anymore, and everyone boycotting it, which obviously didn't fucking happen because no one ever boycotts anything yeah, yeah um, exactly yeah even if, through every misstep be a bad you know bad reception middling yeah. reviews they've always been a force it's always been a juggernaut it's always maintained it's always kept that momentum so to see that kind of fall for the first time in, in quite a while that, that is big you know contextually it's not like they're struggling but they'll look at that number and they'll go okay is yeah. this is this you know, franchise fatigue is this genre fatigue. You know, are we leaning too hard into the the the, the, the kind royale. of battle royale? Yeah. You know, and and your apexes and your Fortnites. You know, Fortnites. I, I don't even know. I, I watched a clip the other day of John Cena getting killed by Moon Knight. While <laughs> you know, yeah, and and I'm I'm just kind of sat there going, what what even is this game? Like, okay, and I love it. I kind of love it for that. I yeah, love it for yeah, that. Yeah, you're just crazy over there doing your thing. Like, go nuts. I yeah. can't build. I, I I used to play Fortnite. I quite enjoyed it. I shot a guy. They built Fort Knox. I went okay, peace, and I walked the other way. And that's that's kind of how. I, that's a, I got <laughs> back into Fortnite recently because of this no build mode. Or yeah, whatever. that's. And I've been tempted, man. I've been tempted. It's really addictive, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's just oh. stupid. Like you say, like you know, you get you, like you grenade in a banana. <laughs> And, and then bit, like, Master Chief hits you with a war target, and Lara Croft throws a Molotov cocktail it, it, at you, it, and then it, it, yeah, like, exactly. It's like a bad what? trip. So, <laughs> yeah, it so, really is. Yeah, honestly, it's like uh, it's it's crazy. Um, but you're right. Yeah, it could be a mix of everything. But franchise what? fatigue, easy solution, isn't it? Just take a year off. You know, yeah. Garner your what, forces. What, what I find interesting, actually, and, and this is I don't. This might be fresher than even you're aware of, because I only I only saw this this morning when I was on the train on the way to the office. Mm -hmm. But um, in the upcoming um called there's going to be basically a, a tarkov type mode or a tarkov type setting wow. that, that, that they're kind of talking about um escape from tarkov for those that are not aware is kind of a pve vp uh type game That's built it. around kind of loss of gear and retention and kind of risk reward and and kind of you know yeah. working with people or against people in a, in a kind of limited map environment to gather resources and, and, and engage with AI or other players and for you know people are alliances are made and betrayals occur every damn time and then you get head eyes by an AI with a SKS from 20 meters anyway so it doesn't bloody matter not that I'm salty about no, it no. <laughs> um, but, yeah. but apparently that's where the rumor has it that at the moment that particular branch of development has got like the biggest lion share from yeah. the devs. So that's the, the, so what, the next what's that they're, they're, they're putting their, their yeah. big weight in. And, and that would make sense. But like, you know, the, not a lot of people have really leaned into that PvE, PvP setting. You know, you've got um, what, like, there's a mode like that in Destiny 2. You've got Gambit, which kind of treads the yeah. same in, in some the ways. Uh, you got Marauders yeah. from yeah. Team 17. And they're doing Marauders, which seems like a very kind of streamlined indie version of Tarkov. That looks super cool. It's had a beta yeah. recently. I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that shapes out. Um, but yeah, apart from that. 
that's the big yeah thing. hunt showdowns i mean that's a great game just for the the, the the intro music alone i just like loading up i just love loading yeah, up hunt showdown and just letting it it's, a, letting big, it it's a big trend though you're right and it's good that you've identified that because we'll yeah. see more of that a lot I reckon mm. over the coming months. Well, I mean, we're starting to see it in indies now. You know, exactly. we, we kind of mentioned Marauders there. And once you, once you see teams, you know, taking it and diluting it down to like what is just the, the, the core energy of this without all the bells and whistles, what is the mechanic and can yeah. we replicate it on an indie side? That That's when you kind of know. That's when you kind of know that it's gone full circle. And, and at some point, and it, you know, I've been waiting for it. Don't get me wrong. I played Taco for a long time. I've I've got the the the, the Uber edition for it, so the the yeah. upcoming arenas mode and that is something that that I'm looking forward to. But you know, it's one of those things, similar with with PUBG and whatnot. Well, back when that was kind of in its infancy, where you're kind of looking at it like, at some point, someone with a lot of money is going to come and make a shiny version of this. And that's what someone, happens. So, so, someone's someone's <laughs> yeah. going to make a big shiny version of this. And yeah. then you're kind of looking. And to be fair, Battle, Battlefield tried it. And with, with the most recent Battlefield 2042, it did have like a Tarkov-like mode where you, you went in, but it wasn't really fully fledged. It didn't really have a lot of the, the, the hookings no. um, that, that people go to Tarkov for. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'll be intrigued. I, I think... The, the the Call of Duty formula has it's it's never really changed, but it's always been successful. Exactly. Uh, I think you know maybe it is a case of franchise fatigue. Maybe it's an audience shift. Like like gaming moves fast. Mm -hmm. No yeah. one no one really cared about things like XP and progression and and in in first person shooters at all until Modern Warfare came out, and then all of a sudden it was everything. And every other shooter around became, became based around it. Hell, I, I remember being bamboozled at the time. Rainbow Six um, Vegas was my shooter of choice back in the day. Mm. I remember being very yeah. confused when all of a sudden Vegas 2 came out and I went, well, I've got to buy it, of course, because it's, I love Vegas and I buy it. And it's the exact same as Vegas, but they've got a Call of Duty XP bar in it and the maps are in daytime now. And I went, okay. I remember that exact <laughs> like, feeling what? of going from what? 1 to 2 and being <laughs> like, ooh. That's weird. Well, yeah, exactly. that's, that's that's right. Like it was that much of a game changer, and and the audience reacted to it. So, you know, they probably might not change the formula. It might just literally be that they've identified that people are, are looking for a little bit more than that fast-paced XP grind, yeah. run and gun, cam camo leveling system, and and they're, they're, they're dipping their feet elsewhere. But hey, it's something. It's something to keep an eye on. Something yeah, to watch. Absolutely. Um, I think for the sake of time, I'm going to skip uh, Diablo yep, and Mortal yep, Player. Yeah. I will read the headline but, anyway, and then we'll yeah, just nod it, politely. Do it. Because <clears throat> yep. Aaron's typed this, so I want to make sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stare at the camera, and, and mm -hmm. you know, Curtis can do something cool. Maybe do like the grayscale rain falling down. Depending on how sad it is. It might be exciting. We don't know yet. Well, let's find out together. A Diablo and Mortal Player who spent 100,000 US dollars on microtransactions in the game is now so overpowered he can't get any games in matchmaking given how much his character surpasses others madness that's how elon musk feels isn't it lonely uh, yes, sad so, and rich so, so, so the, the only answer of course is to send this diablo immortal player to the moon that, absolutely that's, or to mars ticket. i should yeah. say mars, yeah <laughs> so um, uh very very good now well, let's get into let's get into just real shit before we yeah. uh before we to Simon up. Hill, who really does wrap up with some professionalism, some insight, yeah. some nice anecdotes, and a lot of humbleness for somebody who's had such a storied, multifaceted career. However, before that, sexy, sexy killers. Um, yeah. Gotta okay. love them. Okay. <laughs> you need some context for that. You need some context for that because That's the internet it. is wild. The internet's wild. Context. All right. Uh, Behaviour Interactive, best known and pretty much only known, really, for uh, Dead by Daylight at this mm -hmm. point. The absolute monolithic machine that is dead by mm. daylight um a game that is like final fantasy 14 or fortnite or league of legends where it's just people just play that this is yep. a game where one person plays the killer and the rest plays the survivors and they escape it's it's got this kind of asymmetrical multiplayer aspect to it however in a kind of a uh, bit of an overnight a uh, bit of pizzazz uh, they announced a couple of things one is hooked on you a visual novel based on Dead by Daylight where you can finally date the sexy, sexy killers, um, including the trapper who is, and I quote, an alpha male whose bulging biceps and singlet swimsuit leave little to the imagination. Or the it just huntress. got a little bit warmer in here. It just got really warm in here all of a sudden. I've got no idea why. It's so but... funny. And there's the huntress with her, and I quote, peculiar biceps and cute bunny mask. So it's this ridiculous kind of bit of, marketing yeah. where uh you know you, you've seen it along the likes of uh kfc did it didn't they 
Um, yeah, the, the, the uh, I Love You Colonel Sanders or whatever it was, which was great. Yeah, and for Fair those that aren't me. aware, visual novels are like a very popular game uh, in Asia, uh, the, the, where you live. It's almost like an interactive manga where you live mm. out your life um, accosted by adoring, sexy fans. Um, that, that all want you because exactly. you are you are the you are the MC you are the you are the protagonist and everyone is just falling over themselves. It's like being a host of Wired yeah. Unplugged, and yeah, this time they all want to kill you as well, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, the hilarious thing is, it's called Hooked on You, right? Yeah, that's, that's a great name, absolutely great name. Like, uh, I, so good. what? What I mean, like, it's a full game that you can fully buy for ten dollars. But this is just a little appetizer, a little erotic appetizer for something much bigger. <laughs> can you uh, never say erotic appetizer? <laughs> <laughs> no. right. I won't say that again. I promise. Uh, Dead by Daylight <laughs> developers behavior also announced um, PC Master Race bait here. Meet mm. Your Maker, which is uh, a survival... Uh, like a, so it's a new game by Behaviour Interactive that has kind of just been teased, and it is a post-apocalyptic survival game, sci-fi horror elements. You know, it's got mm, essence of Rust, Valheim, mm. The Raft, The Forest, all the other games that start with The and are in early access and cost about £20 on Steam and have a huge player base and mixed reviews. But this one is made by behavior. So And it's got think? three words in the title. So it's automatically <laughs> one word up. Um I want yeah, to visit I mean, the, so yeah. I, I, exactly. Um yeah. I, I mean th- this is a whole, you know, D- Dead by Daylight it, for me is a fascinating um game. It's something that I'm not very good at. Um and I I don't put a lot of time into playing, but I do keep up with it. Um obviously it's it's big enough and, and behavior have done well enough with it that they you know they're they're on almost Fortnite level of yo, is there any you know, you look at the the iconic kind of horror characters and licensing that they've managed to get in the game. Obviously they've been doing stuff with, with Stranger Things and Silent Hill and then Resident Evil and so on and so forth. Mm. But like they are not small by any means now. And uh, they they have that very delicate balance of yeah. They're a live service game. It's what Dead by Daylight is. It is a multiplayer only live service game that kind of relies on staying one step ahead of the curve and on continually coming up with new characters and then new maps and new mechanics and kind of balancing them. It's not an easy thing. You know, even even big long term, you know, super hardcore veteran developers from the likes of Riot with League and Valorant and, and Bungie with Destiny. You know, games as a service game gets very tricky to stay on top of, and oh, yeah, I think it's absolutely. I think it's neat that in this case, you know, on the one hand, Hooked on You is just a neat little, as you said, erotic appetizer. It's a nice little thing oh, yeah. for the thirsty fucking community yeah. because we are so messed up as a species that horror is one step away from. Oh my god, he's gonna kill me! Oh my god, he's gonna kill me! <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. you know, like, like that, Lady Dimitrescu. Like, that, Exactly. Like, yeah. like we've just reached that point where we, we don't mind getting killed as long yeah. as you step on us a couple of times as you do it. Um, That's how you get to Valhalla. So, exactly. And it, it's a great shout out to, to that kind of community and an acknowledgement of, you know what, this is dumb thing, but people do kind of thirst over our horror characters. Um, so let's make a, a cute little side story of that nature. Um, so it's great that that exists, as you said, in the same way that the, the Colonel Sanders game did, yeah. uh, which was a genius piece of marketing. But it's also nice to see them kind of doing, uh, like putting p- pillars and feelers out away from that live service kind of game and, and, yeah. and kind of yeah, get, getting something else out there to, to yeah. not just be, like you said, Dead by Daylight as their only thing. Like, like it's, it's nice to see that. I'm all in favor um, of this kind of, you know, let's take our universe and replicate it across different genres in, in cool ways because, you know, it, it gives them gives them new things to test with, new new skills to play with. Um, and then, yeah, they, they dive straight back into the, the live service type of thing with Meet Your Maker, which, like you say, it looks like Rust, um, very Lust, Lust? Fuck. Farewell. <laughs> lust, lust Rust, yeah. here we go. Um, very, very Rust type trappings of, you know, yeah. like you said, sci-fi kind of post-apocalyptic um, I, I'm actually getting a, more, more than just Rust. I'm actually getting Metal Gear um, Five wow. vibes from yeah, it. The base infiltration aspect. So I didn't mention well, the that ba- earlier. Yeah. So hmm. to be clear, it, the game it's a game of two halves. The first yeah. half of the game, a, a team build a base mm-hmm. as best they can, and then the second half of the game is other players try to infiltrate that base with a variety of means. They've got 
a harpoon gun, a melee weapon, and a grappling hook for like maneuverability or whatever. And mm. it's about that. So it's kind of like, you know, can I just say Fortnite, the OG Fortnite Save yeah. the World, I mean, which Save is a ripoff of yeah. Orcs Must Die. Uh, yeah. it, it, it was, was too great game. Yeah, oh, yeah. Orcs must. Orcs must. Uh, really there for yeah, me. By the way, so, so good, so good. Mm. Yep, yep. So yep. it's it's mm. so so half the game is set in traps. Funnily enough, much like that, and then the second half is trying to break through those walls. So th- there is that. So that that's what I I failed to mention earlier. So you did that's right, and because of that, it links into the base infiltration from Metal Gear Solid, right? That's, yeah, it's a, it's a which game. was. W- which was something that I very much enjoyed. Um, you know, if you take even the whole like nuke disarmament um part out of 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 that and K- K- Kojima's weird need to, to, to yeah make everything really weird and convoluted, God, God, I love that man. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it very much had a similar thing of yo, I'm going to set up my base in a particular way. I'm going to leave these soldiers here doing XXX. And if I want to go out and gather resources or, or find nukes that I can then, you know, stockpile or disarm or do whatever, yeah. you would attack other people's bases and have to deal with how they had them set up. And then that was kind of the challenge was, you know, is my infiltration skill high enough to um, really be able to get in there and get out w- w- with what I want? And it, it's going to be interesting because I'm not going to lie, even from the trailer, it was, it was only very much a kind of teaser, very light introduction into what Meet Your Maker is. Um, you know, on the one hand, it's 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 Home Alone in Mad Max world, which is great. Like, like I'm going to sit here. <laughs> That's and, funny. And, That's uh, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I'm going to sit up and make my McCourtney Culkin um, fever dream here, and you're going to run into my MacGuffin um, generator lemming style and, and die over and over, and that's great. On the other hand, like. It, that's going to be very interesting more than anything because I can't even imagine how hard it's going to be to balance stuff like that. That, you know, people min max in these games. We know that they do. Um, you know, going back to that balancing between uh, everything in, in other um, live service games, yeah. you know, the, the, the infiltrators are going to feel, need to feel like they've got a genuine chance of being able to get in and infiltrate and survive and grab stuff. But at the same time, if I can just walk up to a wall and then repel over every spike and one shot every enemy, then all of a sudden, exactly. Exactly. you know, it's going to be extreme. it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what they do with it. I like the premise. Um, you know, I, I played a lot of Rust back in the day, back before they made the map randomly generated, um, and then I, I, I lost um, interest in that because to, to me. What I enjoyed about Rust was very much what I enjoyed about the original um, DayZ mod with armor, which was having a map and, and knowing it, you, you, you know, right. knowing all the ins and outs and the locations and whatnot. And, and once it became randomly generated in Rust, it kind of I, yeah. I, I lost my, my my love for that. Um, so I'll, I'll be intrigued to see what they do with it. It should be yeah. fun. It, it should be interesting. It looks cool. I I, I, do, I do believe that the devs have a, a lot of experience um, okay. in that kind of arms race. But but good on them. Like, like what a cool thing. What a cool thing. Their by daylight continues rolling. They've got a dating sim. They've announced a completely different genre, completely different game universe. You know, Godspeed. Keep doing cool stuff. Good Do you think? There. And yeah. listen, if the game has a competitive uh, esports scene, then boy oh boy, do we have the presenter for you. <laughs> Final segment of this podcast is with storied presenter, um, internet wonderkin, than the like I say before, a pop culture tornado. We've got Mr. Simon Hill joining us. What a great description. Oh, thanks Pop very much. culture tornado. Um, thanks. He was very fond of um, my compliments uh, when I interviewed him, which we will sit here right now. Um, I kind of trimmed my beard for you, Gary, but I'm um, a bit more oh, the shepherd in this one because it was late at night. <laughs> so uh, you're going to go to Jake with a worse beard and Simon Hill uh, for a little bit, and then we'll come and say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Simon Hill. Wired Unplugged. Oh, well, here we are in another interview segment, and I'm joined by presenter, pop culture in a person, really, Simon Hill. <laughs> Hello, mate. That was, that was quite an introduction. Yeah, thanks, man. Hello, how are you doing? Thank um, you for having me, first of all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely fine. We, In fact, so a little a little bit of behind-the-scenes knowledge for the for the folks at home. Simon, you were going to join us for the entire episode, but uh, Aaron unfortunately couldn't make it. So I thought, well, Sam, we're just gonna—I'm just gonna grill you for about half an hour about your life, really, <laughs> instead, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll give you your very own featurette. Um, so, oh wow! But uh, for, Simon, you're a very, very multifaceted individual, and uh, I think it's best if you describe 
to, to, to the people listening and watching um, what it is that you do? I, th I think multifaceted is, is overselling, but yeah, so um, <laughs> I, uh, so yeah, I, I began my broadcast career in, uh, in radio at Kerrang Radio. If anyone remembers a, a show called Tim Shaw's Asylum, it was very adult uh, orientated. It was kind of the Howard Stern yeah. uh, of British radio. And I used to listen to this. You know, I remember it had the big hi-fis um, yeah. in the corner of your bedroom. And yeah, I used to listen to, to this show, 10 p.m. every night, religiously. And Tim would come on air um, a couple of times and just be like, look, if you want to get on, get on the show, uh, simply just text the studio and you can come and see it all unfold. And I was one of those kids, you know, I was young and I really wanted to see what this was all about. And um, it was you wouldn't think there's something really entertaining in somebody speaking to a mic. Uh, mm -hmm. But this was a radio show that could have its own camera crew. Um, yeah, right. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. it's one of those things that was really enthralling, really entertaining to me. They wouldn't just get guests to talk about what they specialised in. They would get them to perform it on air and then you'd have to paint the picture. Yeah. So it was... Um, it became addictive real quick. And then I remember going, right, well, this, this is what I want to do for, my, for the rest of my life. So I studied media and I remember I got a call from the producer at Kerrang Radio and she said, look, we need a runner and we know that you know the show. Would you like to come in and, and have a go? Wow. And I was like, yes, yeah. yes, I really would. Um, because this was on the show that I worshipped for a radio station at that point that in my personal opinion was at the height of radio in British radio, mm. um, you know, back then. Uh, so yeah, I worked hard. I grafted really, really hard for three and a half years. I was there and then moved on to BRMB, which some of you may know as free radio now. And oh, yeah. then on to BBC WM and then made my transition into, into TV. So, so it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there's a lot, and and the, the journey is unfolding at an incredible rate. Like if you just go on your Twitter, look at what Simon's up to. It's like something different every couple of weeks. So I, I guess like you know, there's a lot to talk about in video games. Of course, you you know got some prominent work recently uh, with Rainbow Six. We'll talk about that just, yes. just a little bit later. And esports in general. You know, um, we've had loads of different guests on from different. Um, facets of the game industry right uh developers publishers artists and things like that but we yeah. we haven't really had anyone come and talk about esports actually so so may, maybe a little bit later on we can talk about that but before we yeah. do that you know there's a lot of uh one wired are really into music like it really runs through the the dna of wired there so uh, i just wanted to say a little a little pit stop here just a very brief one kerrang radio yeah growing up yeah, yeah. What, what's the best album ever made in your opinion Oh yeah, oh, oh. I know. Yeah, that was a tricky oh, one. Oh, that's 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 an on-the-spot question. Um, oh, your favorite? So, How about that? In my personal opinion, I'll go with Metallica Black album. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. phenomenal album. Yeah. Uh, that's good. There were so many back then. I mean, you had Offspring as well, Americana. Yeah. yeah. Uh, phenomenal album. Uh, Iron Maiden, Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. Oh, that's I, you know what I reckon. If, I reckon if you asked a hundred Iron Maiden fans, like Family Fortunes, what the best Iron you'd Maiden get a different. Yeah. I, I, I reckon five of them would say that album. That's well, yeah. that's that's got like the clairvoyant on it, hasn't it? And that moon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right, great, great album. Yeah. All right, good. Made in England, the DVD or or VHS when I was a child. Yeah. I watched that religiously. Fantastic. So yeah, okay, good. So it's it's a it's a, it's a rock background. That's, that's, that, yeah. As Kar Karang, <laughs> not straight far from the path. You know. No. Like, yeah, no. 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 Uh, Okay, cool. You might have just been like, I've seen the light. It's, it's all Beyonce now or whatever. So. No, well, sadly, I mean, sadly, I, I, I also DJ and mm -hmm. that's the sort of music I do have to play. I have to play the Jason Derulo's, uh, the dance hits and things like yeah. that. But uh, no, at heart, the, the rock is very much in my life daily. All right, that's good. I promise you that's probably the hardest question I'm going to ask you because it's a bit it sneaky. <laughs> and I'm not proud of myself, to be honest. But uh, um, no, that's good. Cool. So, 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 um, it's good, and and I got to tell you, you know your your story of kind of being, you know, uh, in front of you know like how um, when you picture like medieval England, people are in front of a, a fireplace. That's how many people our age were around the hi fi, right, with the radio on. Oh, it was like the, the, the source of warmth. Yeah. And and I used to listen to the radio whilst playing my Nintendo GameCube. So 
Uh, oh, man. I think the you're, days. You're, you're a bit of a PlayStation guy, I think, right? I am a Sony fanboy, but I, I did enjoy my GameCube. My N64 was, for me, still the best console ever made. Well, okay, let's go let's go all the way back then as far as we can. Can you remember, like, not, not, not maybe not your first video game, because it might be something like just, you know, I'll walk past someone playing Frogger or whatever, but, like, <laughs> can, can you remember what the, like, the last game that you... Sorry, the first game that you remember, like, going whoa what is this is a video game what is this yeah so i can remember going into tandy's if anybody remembers tandy's back in the day um other electronical stores are available yeah, um, yeah. hashtag not sponsored yeah <laughs> not yeah. sponsored um and picking up my mega drive and i played sonic one yeah religiously and that was my first ever video game memory and you know i would love the idea of you being able to tell a young simon now what the hell rainbow six is and how that all works because <laughs> we've gone a long long way since then haven't we we really really have um and when i got approached for the role of rainbow six uh so i had played bits of it in the past and i i enjoyed watching friends play it you know obviously with the consoles these days you can watch each other playing games and and whatnot whilst you're chilling and rainbow six was always one of those that intrigued me and but it it, it is a spider web uh mm. there are so many elements so many operators so many different things that you can do with the maps and the way they're all yeah. structured different approaches attack defense etc etc so yeah it's very different from running rings uh on sonic <laughs> yeah it, there's a complexity to it now isn't there and and yeah it, it's quite interesting right that you know video like a specific video game like rainbow six can become the only video game for some people like you say it's like it's a bit of a rabbit hole it's like final fantasy 14 or just anime once you're in oh yeah you're in good luck you're in 100%. so like, yeah, there's loads of people i know who just play it. so um you know do, do you think you could have ever imagined or in fact no let me rephrase the question at what point in your life did you realize that you know growing up listening to music uh on a hi-fi and hearing djs and then seeing television presenters at what point did it click that it might even be a viable thing to do that, but with video games? Can you remember that kind of point, or was it quite natural? And you know? yeah, it was. So it was. It was a hmm, how. So I remember creating a Twitter handle called News to Gamers, and all I used to do was I would live report on you know the E threes, the games comes, uh, mm. Paris Games, etc. And I would, you know, post various publishers, developers, uh, new announcements. Yeah. And I started working at this TV studio and I was thinking, what? We haven't had anything since Games Master, like back in the day, right. Channel 4, I think it was. And um, I was just thinking, what, what if we did have something like that again? So I had never wrote a treatment in my life uh, so it took a lot of hours of research and a lot of deep diving, a lot of learning. And I wrote a treatment for a TV show, pitched it to the studio that I was working in. And they went, all right. Yeah, sure. So, so, <laughs> so wow. OK, yeah. So you really it wasn't like that you saw someone else. do it. You were like, right, I'll, I'll just do it myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was exa exactly it. And I, I think I've done. You know, I, I put a quote on Twitter yesterday. Uh, you, the door always appears locked until you push it, mm. and I think that's true to this industry in many ways. Even in your field, you know, yeah. I think you really have to take risks, and that was just one of those. Um, you know, where it's like, okay, I, I really need to do this myself to make it work, and I've kind of followed the same ethos throughout my entire career, really. It's. it's certainly like um helped you establish like yeah footholds in loads of different things of course yeah. you know for people yeah. who are completely unaware of you from you know other places in the world they would have heard you just mentioned in kerrang and for those who by the way it's still completely out of the loop kerrang is a uh, of course like a hard rock heavy metal uh radio uh and tv channel magazine uh 
a conglomerate yeah. almost. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, we, we're talking about video games here with uh, Ubisoft's uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege specifically is the is the the one right the iteration. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so just to add all of the context, let's get everyone up to date. But there's there's lots of other sort of. Um, talents and, and interest that you have and, and one of them i'd like to, to touch on quickly and i'm glad that aaron's not here otherwise this would have been a, a rabbit hole tombstone pile driver choke slam from hell that we'd never get away from <laughs> is 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 wrestling and i've never spoken to anybody uh in depth apart from aaron who really knows that much about wrestling and certainly no one on the podcast so is is, is wrestling been something that's, that's stuck around for you for a while too yeah i've i've been a lifelong fan, um, mm-hmm. but I did drift away for a couple of years. Uh, but it just so happens that the last four and a half years, somehow I found myself working in it. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up on The Rock, on Stone Cold Steve Austin, the whole Attitude Era. And obviously mm. before that, you had Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and... Um, but yeah, it's it's been a a journey, and that's something that I weekly work in as a commentator um, and an announcer. So I travel all up and down the country doing that, uh, and it's 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 weird now that I work in it because I know how everything kind of works in in some regard. So it's very different from when I used to sit at home as a fourteen year old. Which don't get me wrong, my fourteen year old self is absolutely mm. screaming at me right now, like, yeah. "Oh my god!" <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I think so. It's actually uh, what's really weird is this is Friday. This comes out right. So yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, as of tomorrow, Saturday, I have now commentated for a full year in British wrestling. As I was a backstage interviewer before that. Wow. Um, okay, congratulations. And I will as of Saturday night, have commentated my 328th match. Wow, there we go. You still remember. <laughs> After all of those numbers, that's very, very good. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so it's, a, it's already quite a storied career there. Um, and, and I mean, more generally, it is. We've already touched on wrestling music and games, of course. So uh, I, I guess, you know, one final kind of broad question before we scope down into to esports and, and games specifically. Um, if you could identify like what your, you know, maybe personally your your finest accomplishment it doesn't have to certainly be in terms of viewership or prestige. But what what is it that you've you've done out of all of these that's made you the proudest? You know, do, do you know what I, I I thought I thought about this a few times, and you know I could easily be like, oh, I've been nominated for presenter of the year, or I've won New York awards at Kerrang Radio or Sony awards, but it. It's being able to connect with people. I think if I can, whether you're watching or listening to anything I'm doing, if I can bring happiness to one person or a distraction to yeah. one person, then I'm doing my job because that's an escape for that person who's enjoying something that I'm a part of and able to bring some form of you know happiness or escape to. So I think it's more about being able to be in a position where I can entertain or or help somebody by doing what I'm doing. I think that's the most satisfying part of what I do. Yeah, it's a very humble answer and uh, a, a very a very decent one to be completely honest with you. Um, you're also a safe, not that it matters what I think, but you know what I mean. Uh, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, that's very nice. I I noticed that you're also an ambassador for Safe in Our World, uh, who's yes. joined us. Well, I think I've had a. Five ambassadors now as guests, uh, and uh, there's a few of us. <laughs> there certainly is, and yeah, Rosie Taylor, like the uh, the communications oh, officer. Yeah, Ro- yeah, Rosie joined me on a, a podcast here, and I joined her on on one back. Um, so yeah, very very uh, good to have more Safe in Our World family on here. To be honest, and um, again, very video game related, but yeah, so yeah, a lot larger subjects at hand, isn't there? Really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, they really do go out of their way, and I because of safe in our world um i was able to to reach people in a different way and also understand a lot more about myself to be quite honest with you um we recent well recently i think it's going to be about a year probably more now um we went through mental health 
awareness training, which yeah. would give us the qualification to be to be qualified for that. And that was one of the toughest things I've ever done uh, really? in my entire life. Yeah, um, because you know, I, I, I I've. I've always been open about suffering with mental health. And I think that was one thing that every subject or aspect we were going through, I was realizing something new about myself, as well as some of the past things that I've been through that I didn't realize how serious some of them actually were. And um, yeah, to go through that with some incredible people from safe in our world, uh, even some of the guys that work at wired as well, yeah. were on that course. Um, so yeah, it was that was a journey, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without Safe in Our World. That's a fantastic thing to hear, and something that yeah, I'm you know there can't be enough awareness for the sort of thing uh, mm. as you're seeing it everywhere. I mean, a bit of a tangent maybe, and kind of related to not related to wrestling whatsoever, but combat sports. I, I saw that Paddy mm. Pimblett after the UFC yeah. London this week spoke out quite clearly on this, like you know, show you know, underlining again that suicide is the biggest killer of men under 45 so it's a it's a conversation to to be had and had again and again so the training at, uh, that safe number world have been offering if has been you know you're not you're not the first person to say this but uh you're the first person to say it on a podcast so that's great <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and, and and yeah it, it it's honestly like uh it's it's fantastic that every single person who's who's an ambassador of it speaks out so much like that and it just goes to show what how important the message is really you know yeah and and i think now that we're starting to see like more events and and things like that obviously you know uh, there's plans for safe now world to expand on that as well and reach people face to face which is great so yeah you know there's only yeah. i think the more people that that can be reached whether that is through combat sports what paddy had come out and said which was incredible for him to take that platform and yeah, do absolutely um and you know uh, places like safe in our world who are really working hard uh especially in video games to to say look you know there are places you can go yeah uh, to get that help you need yeah, absolutely. So, um, there's been a lot of um adjustment in the in the video game world since uh you played Sonic all that time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although not that long ago, you know. Uh, and, 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 and one of the, one of the big, big, big things that I think a lot of people still can't quite get their head around is esports. It's one of those things that even like hardcore gamers who spend so much time playing their single player games and that. They don't quite get it or, or understand it. So, like esports, um, <laughs> how can you remember, like, when you first encountered it or anything like that? Can you remember, like, if it was a specific game or was it an event or or, or was it on YouTube? Like, can you remember Ooh. how you first came into to contact with it? What was the first thing I ever saw on esports? It might may have been the first year Call of Duty did the National League, or maybe it was before that because I think that's only been around like five four or five years yeah. um maybe csgo then it must have been csgo when frankie ward hosted it and we had met a few times and then i started doing bits just here and there just just dabbling uh as a host trying to you know work out from hosting that gaming tv show to then seeing if i could transition to you know make that next leap up i guess and um yeah i remember seeing it and i was like okay so competitive gaming uh with you know its its own agenda its own rules and being able to perform at a high level just like sports stars mm. or um you know to have gaming on that sort of platform and at a national level and i recently got interviewed for what i thought about commonwealth games now hosting esports which i thought was incredible like yeah. again you know like that's just another step up for the gaming world and showing that esports isn't just a casual thing for gamers it's competitive it's real and you know the the possibilities are endless so yeah i started dabbling in it a little bit and then last year was the biggest thing that i'd done with esl yeah, uh, I was the flown out. Sports league for the people at home who aren't quite aware. Uh, of yes, that is. <laughs> the, the, yeah. it's, it's the <laughs> Thank big you one. For in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. It is indeed the big one. And I was flown out to Poland for a month, um, and hosted 
uh, various shows with people like Jason Kaplan, uh, and Barney Banks as well, who's currently doing the Valorant League yeah. um, over in, I want to say Germany. I've probably got that wrong. Might be France. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're all doing that with Gamer, right, at the moment. So yeah, and there's, there's lots going on. Obviously, you know, just coming off the back of the Rainbow Six Siege Northern Premier League playoffs uh, this weekend, last weekend that I just hosted. So um, it's been a journey and I'm really, really enjoying it a hell of a lot. So yeah. is it... Um... I'm curious, you know. So, so you, you've done Siege, right? So, so this is yeah. so. And for those who are really unaware, Siege, of course, is a, it's a, it's a shooting game, first person, yeah. a tactical team based shooting game. But esports is like sports. Does you know if if you can, uh, you know, uh, do one, it doesn't mean that you can by all means do another. You know, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. um, I was wondering about that in terms of like you know commentary and things like that. How like how much did you have to learn about Siege? first like what's that process like and how intense uh, is it <laughs> yeah it's it's intense um especially so when i first hosted the northern premier league it was mid-season um so ian chambers jet setting across the world doing his thing getting super popular at the moment so they needed someone to fill in and, and i was that guy uh after ubisoft put me forward uh for an audition um well, to send my my show reels and and they yeah. like what they saw. So, because um, I'd previously worked with Ubisoft on like Just Dance World Cup and things like that. Right. So, um, and then I, I come in mid season, so I'm like, oh man, where do I start? So yeah, I'm just watching, uh, you know, the past broadcasts every single night. I am playing it. I am researching Siege like never before. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. learning the operators, learning the maps. Uh, learning the players and the teams that are in that league, uh, writing various scripts, and it's it's a long, arduous process. Yeah. Um, that you know, like I always take my work so seriously, um, and you know, I like to have fun with it. But first and foremost, I'm very professional. So, mm. uh, whatever I'm doing, I take incredibly serious. So yeah. I really went to town on being able to deliver the best I could whilst jumping in mid-season. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I, did, I must have done a good enough job that they had me back for the playoffs, and we absolutely smashed the playoffs. It was incredible fun. Uh, worked with a great team of people. Uh, but I think the most complex thing of it all, to be quite honest with you, and this is going to sound super weird, is I've never done home broadcasts. Right. So yeah. you know, it's always been on a stage or or something like that. So to do all that to get all this set up and you know then link up with the the teams at ubisoft and then obviously all your talent and and cast members it's just yeah that that was the biggest learning curve i think <laughs> well it's it's a hell of a skill to learn that though as well isn't it because yeah yeah you know really becoming a, a swiss army knife of a person aren't you if you can yeah, present pretty much any bit of pop culture and you can do it from your own house like at this point you know you're forced to be reckoned with now, i was really curious about that because I, I i always saw you know i i found that you know like you mentioned like frankie ward like cs goes her bread and butter right um yeah. but it's like it have I was curious as, although it might be a sore subject because you've spent so much time in Siege, if there was another game that you could, what's the dream scenario? What what game would, would you love to? I would love to do the Call of Duty National League yeah. and then move on to the, the championships. That would be the biggest one. I haven't had a, a breath or wouldn't even, I, 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 you know, know where to start with that at the moment in terms of just getting into it. But um, you know, it's it's reaching out to the right people. And I think the biggest thing as well is a lot of these guys um, have agents. I've done all of this without one. So, wow. you wow. know, I think I, it shows that if you really do want it and you really put the work in and you go to town on doing what you need to do, you evolve, you grow. I, people hate, you know, they say, I hate listening to myself back. I hate watching myself back. I do it because if I don't, I don't get better. So yeah. I need to know what I'm doing wrong to get up and, you know, to to evolve. And there's no shame in having constructive criticism from your peers. There's no shame in going, OK, I, I should have done something different with that link or I should have, you know, presented this a little different because that will just make you better for the next job. So, it, yeah, it's it, 
it's good words of advice and and, and really like um we'll come to that uh in just a moment actually I'd, i think you know leaving with some words of wisdom would be would be nice um mm. and especially because i think we've had quite a lot of content creators on before and there's a lot of content creators full stop you know there are a lot uh, there's and, a lot <laughs> but, but, but what what would you say that the main difference is between a content creator and like a, a presenter like ultimately like what, what qualities do you think that are different you know um i mean first and foremost i believe the majority of mainstream presenters have some form of background in media training or broadcast journalism um and are able to deliver a professional product in a way that you would expect from a high quality high end output um i think content creators are i mean there's some incredible ones out there it's, you know stuff that blows my mind i think the difference there is they're people who are able to dedicate their resource time and ability into providing entertainment in a totally different way than a presenter would by hosting a, a mainstream show mm -hmm. whereas content creators can provide something totally different to us that will entertain us i mean we all we all scroll through twitter or facebook and you know we see content that's being created but not necessarily presented if that makes sense yeah no it, it makes perfect sense i think it's quite a, a quite a eloquently put argument for that i think some people just see it as somebody on a screen and 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 so to, yeah <laughs> so to be able to differentiate that way is is, is that you know i i, I mean ultimately i'd like you to take the floor for, for our last few minutes simon and and, and first of all let, let the people at home know um what advice you've got um for anybody who would be interested in presenting and i guess you can draw on a lot of your breadth of experience here in in different fields and i, sus I also suspect that depending on which field you want to go into there's different stuff but if you wanted to become a presenter what sort of skills would you need uh what sort of resources would you need and, and ultimately for people who may be already in the pipeline and it's time for them to go out, what, what they yeah. need to talk us through the kind of the, the process. Give us a whistle stop tour. A whistle, <laughs> the whistle stop tour. So uh, in, if you're looking to expand in, into being a presenter, obviously you need to be able to have great diction, uh, you know, great delivery and be able to speak clearly that, will allow others the people that are watching you to engage and understand and you know also have the ability to interact i think interaction is one of the biggest things and also almost a lost art in modern presenting because if you go back to some of the old stuff that we may be used to watch big breakfast for example mm -hmm. um you know uh those kind of presenters would get you to interact you know with some of the biggest shows in the world and I do find that's a lost art these days, but you know, you want to be engaging. So, you know, use the word eloquent there. You want to be able to deliver something that's engaging, fun, and not robotic. But I guess in terms of skills, is research is your biggest tool. Um, I still watch people that I admire or look up to or respect. I love what some of the people in my industry are doing like ian chambers frankie ward mm. they are incredible talents two people who i'm fortunate to know frankie more so um and you know when you look at people like that who work in the same field as you it gives you inspiration so with that inspiration use it use the energy to research to get more knowledge and whether that is through reading watching or studying uh you know just make sure that you're using that to drive you forward to the next level and i've always been a big believer in no one's ever the finished product uh there's always growth and that goes for anyone you know even ryland for example, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the, the guys everywhere are doing amazing things, earning amazing money, but there's always an evolution to what you can deliver and what you can do next. Uh, so, yeah, my, my example is study hard, research and also stay humble. Uh, I've come across people in this industry that, that aren't necessarily humble anymore because they're, you know, the, the, the big boy playing with the big boys and have a big house and 
uh, you know, that side of them has, has gone from when, you know, you initially meet them or work with them. And it's always good to see that people stay rooted. So stay thankful, stay humble. I mean, you know, look, I've been so fortunate and lucky and grateful to have the opportunities and things uh, that I've had in my life so far. Uh, but I stay thankful and I stay grateful because without those people who have that faith and trust in me, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess in a nutshell, that's it really. I could probably do this forever, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good, no, it's good motivational speaking. So uh, as a final sound <laughs> off, you, uh, again, somebody with as many um, jobs and, and, and talents as you, this always something on the horizon so would you like to let the people know uh, what you've got coming up and when they can find it yes uh so obviously uh you know we did just do the rainbow six siege mm -hmm. uh mpl playoffs uh that happened last weekend you can obviously watch that back on the rainbow six twitch channel uh the finals are happening in september I'm not sure if i'm going to be there just yet but we'll soon find out um i do have a load of wrestling shows coming up yeah um Throughout this month, uh, one of them is with the one of the top three promotions in this country, which I am super excited about, uh, Future Shot Wrestling, who produce some of the best talent in this country. So if you if you're a wrestling fan and you know people like James Drake in WWE um, and his tag partner as well, uh, oh gosh. That's thought his name is the scouser um uh but anyway they 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 all started with future shock there's many other names in 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 the country that did as well so um yeah you know i'm getting to, to commentate their 19th anniversary which is a huge pleasure and a huge privilege and i can't wait to be a part of that uh other stuff that's coming up I, I, it's kind of all under wraps at the moment so i recently um stadium announced for warsaw football club <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which was which was super cool because I did it in front of nine and a half thousand people against Aston Villa uh, for Amazing. for a friendly, which was awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm just waiting on word with that too. So yeah, there's there's lots coming up, but there's a lot that I can't talk about just yet. But uh, on Twitter is where you'll find absolutely everything. As you said, there's always something new every day or every week that I'm posting up mm -hmm. there. I'm sure people just get fed up with me by now, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah all right well all the links to simon's socials are below simon thank you very very much for all, all your time and effort with me there we go simon hill what a nice guy yep what you know nice what guy. that was that was a really that was a riveting uh you know i, I don't use that word often <laughs> i enjoy our, our guest interviews but that was riveting that dude is like a swiss army knife of yes. culture and cross references like that was great Really I that. love Simon. So uh, it's Good really day. great to see you guys again. Um, I think we're doing something special with Unplugged next week. That is something to do with uh, Arcade Paradise. More on that next week. So I will see you in a couple of weeks. Gary will see you whenever he's allowed out again. Yeah, right? but whenever, whenever I find the keys to the recording booth or, yeah. and or Aaron sees a Pokemon. That's <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> right. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us on Unplugged 25. If you want to get in touch, it's Wired P on Twitter or Unplugged at WiredProductions.com. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Wired Unplugged.